Okay, so now we're going to look at a couple different methods to add data to ArcGIS Online. Um, so what I'm going to do is work with this data set. So this is a data set, uh, or is a vector data set of points representing uh, summits or peaks in West Virginia. So I've got, I obtained this data from the West Virginia GIS Tech Center. Um, it's their data services website, and I downloaded the UTM NAT83 version of the data. It was a zip folder. I've already uncompressed it and opened it in ArcGIS Pro. Okay, so here I am in ArcGIS Pro, and um, all again, all these points represent our different uh, locations or summit locations. If we open up the attribute table here, you can see the different attributes that are available. So we have the name of the topographic map it's in, the elevation in feet from the topo map. Um, the elevation from the National Elevation data set, the latitude and longitude coordinates, and um, yep, some other, so the feature name, so on and so forth. So a bunch of information there, um, available there. Okay, so um, now we would like to take this data and actually get it onto the web. So the first thing we're going to look at is um, uploading a CSV file. Um, we're going to basically going to experiment with loading the same data layer using a bunch of different methods just for the sake of comparison. Obviously, you would only have to do this one time um, if you were working with, uh, if you just need to get it online. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm going to do, um, or sorry, I'm going to open this up again. So I'm going to take this attribute table and I'm going to export it out. So once I'm clicked, when this layer is active in the content pane, I can go to data and I can do export table. And what I'm going to do is save this as a CSV file once it loads. Okay, cool. So um, let me go in here to save this into a different location. So I'm just going to save this on my local drive. So I'm going to go into this work folder here. I'm going to do, I'm going to add a new folder. I'm going to call it new ArcGIS Online videos data. Okay, and I'm gonna save this out. So you can see there's a couple different options there. I'm gonna save this out as a CSV file. So I'm gonna call it summits.csv. All right, save. Now first, before I do this, just a note, this already has the latitude and longitude fields in it. Um, so there, it should load in um, It'll load it. it. We don't need to do that. Actually, you know what? Let's just do that quickly because that's something you may actually need to know how to do in the future. All right, so I'm going to delete these um, just so I don't have any confusion. So when we say something is a table, we're going to have to have the, the, the coordinates in the table so we know how to display it as a point layer. Um, saving the, this only really works for points. You really wouldn't do this for a more complicated geometry like a line or a polygon. All right, so we're going to add a new column. I'm just going to call it lat, and we'll make it a double so we can have decimal places. And we'll save that. All right, and then we'll click here to add a new one, and then we'll do long, and again, we'll make that a double. All right, so now we have two blank lat long uh, at, or co attribute columns. Now what I'd like to do is calculate in here the, the geometry and specifically the latitude and longitude. So I'm going to right click on this. I'm going to go to calculate geometry and I want to calculate in this case the point x coordinate um, because, well actually sorry, point y coordinate because we're going up and down latitude and we want to do this relative to the web or to the to the WGS eighty four data. So I'm going to do geographic coordinate system, world, and WGS eighty four. So when you publish web maps out, you generally want your data to either be in the in the web Mercator projection, w, specifically WGS eighty four web Mercator, or the WG the web the WGS84 data. Okay, so if I do this, that should populate, and I can actually do both of these at once. Do x coordinate there. So then we should get back our latitude in WGS84 and our longitude in WGS84. All right, and there's our coordinates. All right, so now we did that, let's now save the table uh, finally. So we'll go in here 
again we want to save this into or I'm just going to save this into a local folder here uh, was this new ArcGIS Online videos and we'll call this summits dot csv and save and okay all right so now i have a csv version of this data which is effectively just a, ta a tabulated data um, but we do have the coordinates so we can get back the point geometry all right so now let's figure out how we actually want to add that to the map in arcgis um, online okay so let me go back here to ArcGIS Online. Now I'm going to go in. Well, first off, let me save my map where I had what I had done so far. And I could add from file here, add layer from file, but I'm going to do this a little bit differently. So I'm going to go back here to my content. I'm going to make sure that I'm inside of my layer or my, my uh, folder for this set of videos. So there we are. And now I want to do new item. Okay, cool. So um, what, I, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag that layer from my local drive into this into this window here. All right, so we, uh, I'm just doing this on my other screen real quick to get into that folder. Okay, so here we go. This is that folder. So what I'm going to do is just take this summit CSV file and I'm going to dump that here. And it should understand that it's a CSV file. Okay, so um, how would you like to add this file? So add the file and create a hosted feature layer or just add the file? So we're going to, do, we're going to both add the file and create a hosted feature layer from it. Um, and then these are all the fields. You can actually go through here if you want and like change the name of the fields. We're not going to worry about that for now. You can also not import all the fields if you if you want to. And that this should do it. And then let's do next. All right, so um, it's asking now what represents the latitude and longitude. And you can see it was smart enough to figure out that lat was probably latitude and longitude was longitude. If you had different names that weren't as obvious, you may have to actually change these out. Okay, so it's going to summits. I'm going to call this summit CSV since we're going to bring it in in a couple of different methods. And the tags here, we'll just, I'm just going to put summits for now. <laughs> All right, and then we'll hit save. Okay, there's reloading my content. Oh, actually loaded the drop page. So we have our layer there. It has its own URL if we want to add it to other maps. Okay, so now let's go back to content here. And we're going to open up my summits map. So I'm going to its drop page. I'm going to open in map viewer. And I would like to add these summits to the map. So to do that, let's go to add browse layers and it should pop up right away so generally the thing that you most recently added will be at the top here so there it is so if I hit add it'll add those point layers in now if I wanted to go through and edit the symbology and stuff um, and like pop-ups and whatnot um, you can we're gonna save that for later right now we're just looking at different ways that you can add data into ArcGIS online okay so that was basically taking a point layer saving out the table as long as it had latitude and longitude coordinates in it, and then uploading that as a table, and then using the lat long fields that reproduce the points. Obviously, that won't really work well if you have polygons or lines. So let's look at a couple other ways that you can read in data. Let's see. So I'm going to go back to ArcGIS here, um, ArcGIS Pro. So when you have a point layer, you can upload it, or or a line, or a polygon layer, vector layer. You can upload a shape file, um, but you have to go. You have to have a couple. You have to make sure a couple things are correct first. So first thing, you're going to want this to be in the either WGS84 or Web Mercator projection. So I'm going to reproject this because it's actually in UTM17 North within in the NAT83 datum. So I'm going to go to Analysis and open up the toolbox, and we're going to look for Project. And this is under data management. Okay, so we want to take our layer, and it, see so it already knew the coordinate system there, 
and we want to create a copy. I'm going to do this in this video folder. Actually, I'm going to put this in a subfolder and you'll see why. So we'll call this summit shape. So I'm going to save this out as a shape file. And then we'll just call it summit shape again. All right. All right. And then here I want to change the coordinate system. So um, we're going to change this to WGS84 Web Mercator, which um, was already, I believe, one, one of the layers was in that. So we could also search for it under G. That would be a, a geographic coordinate system, or actually a projected coordinate system. So it'd be, I'll just do that. So we do projected coordinate system, world, and then somewhere here there should be Web Mercator. WGS84 Web Mercator Auxiliary Sphere. All right, and then there's you can use different transforms. We'll just let it use the default one there, and um, we'll hit run. All right, so this is saving into a folder as opposed to a file geodatabase. So by default, it's going to turn that into a shape file because you can't save a feature class outside of a database. Okay, so now if I go back into here, if I go into this folder, this summit shape, we should now have the components of that shape file inside that folder. Note that there are some lock files and that's because it's open in Arc, on Arc Pro. So I'm going to remove it and those lock files should go away. Sometimes they're a little slow to go away. Let me uh, do a refresh. It may still be because it's in this tool I think. Let's close that. I'm going to zip this up so I don't want to have the lock files in there. It won't really matter, but it's kind of messy. Well, if you know what, we'll just close this just to make sure. Okay, there we go. So there's our shape file. The lock files are away now. So uh, next thing I want to do is take this and turn it and compress it into a zip folder. So if I right click there, I should be able to do a send to, show more options, send to compress folder. Okay, so now we have this zipped up into a compressed folder. So basically if you want to save a CSV or a shape file and upload it to Arc Online, you basically have to take the content, make sure it's either in Web Mercator or in WGS84, uh, Web Mercator projection or WGS84 datum, which we changed it to Web Mercator and then compress it into a zip folder. Okay, and then if we go back to ArcGIS Online, it's uh, save our map here, and we'll go back to our content. Then we can do new item, and now we're just gonna do the same thing. We're gonna open up that folder, and we're gonna now, instead of um, our CSV file, we're gonna move over our our shape file. And you can see there that it understood it was a shape file. Uh, you can just upload the shape file or you can upload the shape file and turn, convert it into a hosted feature layer, which is what we want to do. Again, this will just give it names. I'm just going to put summits here and then we'll add anything else. All right, so there's a layer. It's on this drop page there. Um, let's go back to our content again. And I'm gonna open up my summit map. And we, you can see that we're able to load that data in from the source now, or from this new source. Now we won't really need to do that because we already have the layer added because we did it with the CSV version. So if we add this again, you see it's basically going to be the same thing. It's just was added at a different method, right? So we don't really need that, so we're just going to remove it. All right, so that's one way, that's another way to do it. Okay, so another option is to use a um, GeoJSON file. Um, so you can make uh, GeoJSON files in ArcGIS Pro, but um, I have uh, really like QGIS for this. So I'm going to open up QGIS here and we'll demo how to create a GeoJSON file in QGIS and then upload that to ArcGIS Pro. Don't 
QGIS is loading on my other screen here. I'll pull it over when it's ready. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to open up a new blank project here. Ignore that. And I'm going to find that file that we, the shape file that we just created. There it is. And it should be in the shapefile folder, and then we're going to add that. Okay, so there's our shapefile that we just created. And remember that this is already in the Web Mercator projection. So what I'm going to do to save this as a GeoJSON file is I'm just going to right-click here in the Layers list, do Export, Save Feature As. So um, QGIS is a really great tool for... Um, for just doing data conversion. So if you don't use it for anything else, it's worth having it on your computer if you're a GIS professional just for data conversion. So you can see you can convert between lots of different types. So we're gonna stick with GeoJSON. We're gonna call it Summits GeoJSON. And let's make a couple other edits. Um, first off, the precision is set to 15. That's gonna give us a lot of decimal points, which we really don't need. So I'm gonna bump that down to four which should be enough. And um, you can also create a bounding box if you want. We'll have to do that. We're not going to worry about anything else for now. And it already is set to, again, you could change the projection here, but we are in the projection we want, the Web Mercator projection. Okay, so if I hit OK, that just created a GeoJSON version of that layer. So if I go into my folder here, I should now have that available. Did I save it here? Where did I put it? I think I forgot to actually move it to a location that I wanted. So where did it put it? Oh, I'll put it in my documents. I forgot to move it. Anyway, we can find that in a second. So anyway, there's the file um, created with with uh, um, with QGIS. So let me go to the that lo documents location. Again, I forgot to save it where, where I wanted. Um, if you're not familiar with GeoJSON, it's, it's based JSON is JavaScript object notation. JavaScript is kind of the client side web language, so um, a lot of things can read GeoJSON files. They're effectively just can open up and be viewed like a text file. So let's just open it up with Notepad. Let's see if it actually works. And here you can see the structure of that data. So basically, this is it is JavaScript. It's a JavaScript object notation, um, and the geo part basically just means it can store geographic information. Okay, all right, there we go. So that's the summit file there. So I'm going to move this over. We can close out it or get out of QGIS here. So again, if I want to add a GeoJSON file, it would basically be the same as what we were doing before. So I would just, and then I'm going to go back here when we save this. And then I'm going to go back here to, um, to my content. And we will do another new item. Again, I can just take that layer and drag it in. Again, we're going to save the layer and then turn it into a hosted feature layer. We'll just leave JSON there. I'll just add my summits tag. And then this will generate yet another version of this layer that was brought in using from a GeoJSON file as opposed to a CSV file or a shape file. So again, if we go back to our map object, we can go to, let's see here, oops. Open a new map, or open map, and then if we do add layer, browse, we should see our new GeoJSON version listed there. Okay, so now you should know how to add data from your content, from content that's shared with you um, within your organization, from content that's shared publicly through ArcGIS Online or through the Living Atlas via Esri. Then we've looked at taking local files and uploading those as a CSV file, which works for point layers, as a shape file that was all put into a compressed folder, which works for point line or polygon files, 
Um, or um, lastly, as a GeoJSON file, which we created using QGIS and then imported in. Um, so we still have a couple other options that we can look at for saving files. Um, so that's what we're going to look at um, in the next video.